Ladies and gentlemen, from Concord, California, and now available on BarbershopWindow.com comes the most pathetic, hideous, sloppy, eternally disgusting, continuously terrible, and fantastically laughable woman to appear on this or any other t-shirt ever. Treat yourself to all red everything. Get off my TV, Eva. Marie! boxes right here on youtube.com this is off the script thank you guys so much for joining me man episode 133 part number two for your september 3rd 2016 man i am gonna fill you guys in on literally Everything concerning Alberto Del Rio. I actually rolled my R's there, man. Holy shit. I think this video deserves a thumbs up just for that, bro. Holy shit. Anyway, man, Del Rio. Obviously, he is packing his bags back to Mexico. Because WWE no longer wants him. They no longer need him. He doesn't want to be employed under the WWE flag. So, I have all the news regarding Del Rio's status, what he was promised, and there is even a story about WWE threatening to fire Paige unless she broke up and broke the relationship up with Alberto Del Rio. We're going to go over all that, plus so much more in today's video, man. You don't want to miss it. I literally have everything covered about this story, plus my opinions on top of it, which really isn't much because... Quite frankly, I don't give a shit. There's really nothing else to talk about this weekend. And this is the second biggest story of the weekend. I will have other smaller videos uploaded on my channel. Apparently, everybody wants me to make a video on this Roman Reigns situation. Either Roman Reigns getting his vest taken away in some fucking online petition. Or the fact that Roman Reigns is the number one ranked wrestler in the world according to Pro Wrestling Insider. And I laugh at that. I scoff. I mock. I belittle. I point and fucking do my million dollar laugh. <laughs> no. No. I will do no such thing on Off The Script, man. We're going to save that for a separate video because I think I got to make light of certain situations uh, regarding PW Insider. And I will honestly give you my opinion about who I think is the number one ranked wrestler in the world. It may come to a surprise to many. It might not shock any of you, to be quite honest with you, what I'm going to say, but that will be in a video later on today, probably. I'll get, I'll get recording that 
uh, you know, early afternoon on Saturday. It'll probably be uploaded on Saturday night. And if you guys have been following me on Twitter, you guys know, indeed, who I think the number one ranked wrestler in the world is for fiscal year 2015 going on into 2016, okay? Because I'm assuming the polling had to uh, come down to, I don't know, just a couple of months ago. So I will give you guys all that information and my opinions on that and give you some logic behind that. So expect that later on today. There's also a story going around that Jim Cornette is absolutely trashing both Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn for their work in WWE, especially Kevin Owens now that he is the WWE Universal Champion. I'm going to make a video on that as well because it's quite hilarious how Jim Cornette really doesn't go into detail about their work ethic in WWE. It's mainly him and his gripe with both guys and when they work together in Ring of Honor. That's all it is. It's, it's a personal distaste for both men. It has literally nothing to do with their in-ring work. It's the fact that Jim Cornette couldn't stand working with these guys in Ring of Honor. And now, his old school mentality is really fucking clouding his judgment. And he sees these two guys succeeding in WWE. And for some odd reason, he's just fucking hating on both of them. I don't know why. So we'll talk about that. There's another story going around that CM Punk and Colt Cabana have ended a 15-year friendship. Because Colt Cabana was recently at a WWE taping backstage. Hanging out, making acquaintances, and taking pictures with his friends. Meanwhile, CM Punk is literally being sued by the WWE and fucking their medical team. And Vince McMahon is backing Chris Amon, their head doctor and trainer, as he sues CM Punk for what he said on Colt Cabana's Art of Wrestling podcast a couple of years ago on Thanksgiving Day, where he just came clean about everything that happened with his staph infection and how he was treated in the WWE, man, some oddball fucking stories coming out, I think I may make videos on all three separately away from off the script, so you guys got a lot of content to look forward to, so make sure you keep your eyes and ears tuned to this channel, man, thank you guys so much for that, quickly, Twitter, at JD from NY206, YouTube, same thing, if you're not subscribed here, <laughs> Listen, I don't know what the fuck you're waiting for, man. I, I seriously don't know what the fuck you're waiting for. JD from NY206, number one source right here for literally everything WW related, right here on YouTube.com as we head towards 63,000 subscribers, man. Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you guys want to check out the WWE Slam Crate and use the coupon code JD from NY, man, it is a bi monthly crate. You guys got three different plans. My link will be down in the description below, and you can use my coupon, coupon code, man. Save 10% instantly on any one of those three packages. I can't wait to do unboxings with that right here on Off The Script. If you guys want to check out my friends over at WrestleCrate as well, use the coupon code JDSENTME for an instant 10% off on that product as well. WrestleCrate.com and on Twitter, at WrestleCrates. Good shit going on there, man. We may do, like I said yesterday on Part 1, like a Monday Night Raw versus SmackDown type theme with both Wrestle Crate and WWE Slam Crate by Loot Crate. So look forward to that, man. Good times are coming right here on Off The Script. If you guys want to check out my Patreon page, man, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Read the mission statement if you enjoy what you hear right here on the podcast. If you enjoy what you hear on iTunes. If you enjoy my video game content whenever I upload, uh, uh, or upload video game entertainment for you guys. If you guys want to donate and pledge, it is not an obligation. You guys can do so whenever the fuck you want. And it's there for you, man. Read the mission statement. Read what I'm about and what I'm doing and where I want to go with this and why I'm doing it. It's great stuff, man. Really emotional stuff. That's patreon.com slash JD from NY206. And finally, guys, if you missed anything that I uploaded this previous week, man, we got Monday Night Raw Review, SmackDown Review, Cruiserweight Classic Review, and then obviously Off the Script as of yesterday, Part 1, where we talk about backstage criticism of Kevin Owens winning the WWE Universal Championship. That is all linked down in the description below. Some WW2K17 stuff as well with the final week of the roster reveal and Oscar's in-ring entrance for NXT in WW2K17. A lot of good shit, man. If you missed anything, everything you need is down in the description below. So thank you guys for that. Now, 
Let's get into the news of the day here. And it's a, it's a big story, man. Alberto Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio reportedly finished with the WWE. WWE then threatened or then threatens to fire Paige because of her relationship with Del Rio. They want them split up. This is the entire story about this entire saga that unfolded this week. It was previously reported that Alberto Del Rio had an escape clause in his contract that would allow him to, uh, to pretty much back out of his WWE deal should he feel it was necessary. It would seem that Mexico's greatest export has in fact left the warehouse. According to a report from WrestlingInc.com, Del Rio is officially finished with the WWE and will not be returning to the company. He let the company know 60 days ago through his lawyer that this was the case. Del Rio was incredibly frustrated with his position in WWE and was promised certain things that never came to be. Upon his return to the company in 2015 at Hell in a Cell, he was told that he would be given a main event push. However, he was instead put in angles that did not go anywhere, such as the Mexican America angle with Zeb Coulter and the League of Nations stable with Wade Barrett, Rusev, and Sheamus. You guys know that deal. They were pretty much put together to merely and simply do one thing and one thing only, and that was to get Roman Reigns over as a babyface. All of that, plus all four of those guys as a stable, failed. And they failed to get Roman Reigns over because as we sit today, Roman Reigns is still the most hated man in the industry. The wrestling universe most recently saw Del Rio in the news following his 30-day suspension from WWE for his first violation of the company's wellness policy on that same day. His real-life girlfriend, Paige, was also suspended for a wellness policy violation. As it turns out, the door opened back up for Del Rio to return. And he did that in late 2015, like we mentioned, at Hell in a Cell. And a little less than a year and a half after his initial departure, Del Rio negotiated exclusively with Vince McMahon, signing him to a sweetheart deal, very financially favorable for Del Rio, that had a multi-year duration. The two often flew together, even on Vince's private jet, and had developed quite a bond with Vince McMahon. However, as has been reported over the last several weeks, there was a one-year out clause that Del Rio recently exercised. Del Rio was making main event money, but never competed in an actual pay-per-view main event. That was not the intention initially, however. As we know, Del Rio made his triumphant return at last year's Hell in a Cell event, defeating John Cena for the United States Championship. Cena then left to undergo surgery and film the debut season of his reality show, American Grit. But the plan was to have him feud with Del Rio upon his return. Unfortunately, the creative became extremely lackluster for Del Rio, and his stock had severely declined by the time Cena would come back. According to Cage Side Seats, Vince had initially promised Del Rio that he would pair him with Paul Heyman to help him push Del Rio as a top Mexican babyface, a role for the company that had been difficult to find, and it's been very difficult ever since Rey Mysterio left. They thought that Del Rio could have easily filled that role. However, Vince changed his mind and then paired Del Rio with Zeb Coulter instead. While the win over Cena was significant, the pairing was odd from the moment it happened and ultimately failed before it could get off the ground. Programs with Jack Swagger and Kalisto certainly did not help Del Rio's cause. And by the time Cena came back, an angle with Del Rio simply wouldn't have made any sense. Now, you know, everybody makes mention that it really didn't make any sense for Zeb Coulter to be put with Del Rio because they were so polar opposite of one another, right? You know, Paul Heyman is absolutely fucking amazing at what he does. He is one of the great minds, the great fucking voices of our generation when it comes to professional wrestling. Not everything that Paul Heyman does or not everybody that gets paired with Paul Heyman sees success. We've seen this already. You know, the Axles, the fucking, uh, what's his name? The Cesaros, right? 
These guys didn't go anywhere, but Cesaro was mainly a WWE fuck-up. They fucked that up. I don't blame that on Paul Heyman whatsoever. You know, I, I really don't. You know, Curtis Axel, some may say he has it. Some might say he doesn't have it. Some might think he's boring. Some think he's great. I think he's got a great in-ring talent, and he's got a lot of promise if they want to push him as a mid-card guy. That's just me. Pairing him with Paul Heyman might not have been the best idea. I understand that their intentions were good, but it ultimately was never going to work because people were just not invested in Curtis Axel. Even with the name change from Michael McGillicuddy, remember that? They changed his name, and it just didn't work because, like I said, people were not invested in Curtis Axel. Curtis Axel felt forced upon everybody, you know? He didn't transgress organically. He didn't develop organically. And I still think he's one of the lost cases in WWE. He's got so much fucking talent, they just don't know what to do with him or they refuse to use him. You know, it's a shame. So pairing Del Rio with Paul Heyman, you know, who, who knows if it would have worked? You know, not everybody that gets paired with Paul Heyman is automatically going to fucking strike gold. It, it's not going to happen. Del Rio could have, you know. He could have very well struck gold with Paul Heyman. We just wouldn't know because, you know, he was promised this. And then Vince McMahon, in typical Vince McMahon fashion, switches it up. Pairs him with Zeb Coulter instead. Like, that made any more fucking sense. I know everybody, if you had to choose Zeb Coulter or Paul Heyman, fucking 10 out of 10 will pick Paul Heyman. I'll take my chances with Paul Heyman. No reason to put Del Rio with Zeb Coulter. That, right out of the fucking gate, made no sense. It literally made no sense. Just as much sense as pairing Ricardo Rodriguez with Rob Van Dam. No sense whatsoever. Oddball pairings. So, that was that. There was a last-ditch effort at relevance when Del Rio helped form the League of Nations. But there, you know, was nothing there. And they were nothing more than fodder to get Roman Reigns over. And they didn't quite materialize into a top heel stable some were hoping for. They were never going to develop in a, into a top heel stable. I mean, you took four, four mid-card guys that people just did not give a fuck about. You think people are going to care about them now that they're all together? People knew immediately what these guys were put together for. To get Roman Reigns over. This was evident the second week these guys were born. People are not stupid. They were never going to be a top heel stable, ever. Wade Barrett was never a top heel. Rusev was an embarrassment at that point. Del Rio was lost, right? And none of them. None of them at all. Sheamus? Give me a break. Sheamus was a fucking waste. A fucking waste. People were falling asleep during his matches. Wade Barrett won a King of the Ring and was made into nothing after winning King of the Ring. Rusev was coming out of a feud with Dolph Ziggler. Absolutely fucking meaningless, embarrassing garbage. People were going to care about these guys? Of course not. They were never going to care. They were never going anywhere. People knew immediately they were going to be fed to Roman Reigns, and that's all they were put together for. So, they were disjointed, and then the Wyatt family went out with injuries, and the company decided to disband them. So, goodbye. League of Nations is no more. Especially with Wade Barrett leaving, he was gone. WWE released him after WrestleMania. Vince was always in Del Rio's corner, but Triple H did not feel the same way. McMahon wanted to push the American, uh, or the Mexican aristocrat, I should say, again after the brand split, but Hunter put on the brakes, and nothing ever came of Del Rio's push. It was thought that his wellness policy violation was the final straw, but he had apparently given his notice prior to the suspension. As noted, WWE has needed a top Latino babyface to carry the torch for that audience. And many believed bringing him back in, in 2015 as a heel was a mistake. The original plan was for him to start as a heel, eventually turn on Coulter, and fill that role that they wanted as a Mexican babyface. But the partnership with Zeb flat out did not work, and everything thereafter failed to click. On a personal level, things seem to click between Del Rio and Paige, unless you ask Triple H, who felt he was a bad influence on the women's superstar. Her status will certainly 
be one to keep an eye on in the months to come. Now, speaking of Paige, according to MLW Radio, Mark Carano, the fucking goon you see floating around on Total Divas, and he's the guy who's like an office liaison, he's like one of them fucking backstage guys, you know, he, he talks to all the talent. He approached Del Rio and Paige individually and harassed each of them about their relationship. It was indicated that the office wanted them to sever their romantic relationship. It has been rumored numerous times that people backstage have been against the two being together with some fearing that it would be terrible for Paige. Triple H, who runs talent relations, is not a big fan of Del Rio or his attitude. He was against bringing Del, Del Rio back when they first initially did, but Vince McMahon ultimately ruled for it to occur, so it happened. Triple H has since tried to pull Vince back from giving Del Rio a shot at the top because of the issues he gives the company backstage. This very well could be the reason why Carano was all for killing off the relationship as he was clearly acting on orders from Triple H. He was also acting on the same thought that many had about the two being together since the relationship went public. It seemed that WWE was so against it that Carano was willing to do something drastic. MLW Radio would go on from his comments saying, A lot of people speculated if this was the reason WWE split them up in the draft, and that's definitely what happened. The company did not want them together. They split them up in the draft by design, and they threatened to fire Paige if she didn't break up with Del Rio. Technically, under various bylaws, WWE cannot do this. However, both are not originally from the United States and do not have a citizenship in this country. That means the WWE can, can threaten to kill off their contracts in this way if they so desire. Therefore, Paige surely knows that they could go that far if they wanted to. Pretty sick fucking shit. While most would believe WWE would be going way too far by threatening to fire someone over their relationship, it does appear the company cares about Paige and feels Alberto Del Rio is bad for her. It's initially what I thought to begin with. I'll give you my thoughts in a second. They are not willing to lose her, especially when they know she still has a lot of potential. However, her choice in relationship causes friction in the WWE, and it seems like it does for her personally going by the drug failure alone. That said, it will be interesting to see how things go down in the future with Paige and the WWE. I'm going to make this quick and to the point, okay? The end of this article says exactly what I was going to say before I even came on here, okay? I don't give a fuck about Del Rio in WWE. I just don't. I don't. Ever since, and I've said this many times, and I don't want to beat a fucking dead horse... I don't fucking care. Ever since they took the fucking white towel away and the fucking glittery entrance and the cars and his ring announcer, this guy was absolutely fucking garbage in WWE. He was just like the rest. No identity and nothing stuck out about him that made him unique and special. They took everything away from him just like they took everything away from Damian Sandow, just like they took everything away from Wade Barrett. They took everything away from those guys that made them special. And they were nothing but fucking manufactured WWE garbage for the rest of their careers. I don't give a fuck about Del Rio in the WWE. Now, that doesn't mean I don't give a shit about Del Rio. I want to see Del Rio succeed. Not everybody is cut out for WWE. Not everybody is cut out for the political garbage that happens in the WWE. If you're not liked, just like you are in the real world, if you're not liked by a higher up or a boss that you're working under or you're working for, you are not going to get anywhere. If Triple H does not like you, you will eventually go down. No matter how much Vince McMahon adores you and loves you, you know, if you're going to have Triple H, who his... Who, who is his son-in-law? Triple H is a part of the McMahon family. If you have Triple H constantly beating you down week after week after week, month after month after month, and it just fucking beats on you until one day you wake up and Vince McMahon says, you know what? Okay, we'll do it. You know? 
Del Rio was never going to go anywhere in WWE based on that fact alone. The WWE is not cut out for everybody. It's not. There's nothing wrong with that. Del Rio is such a great talent with an MMA background. He's revered and idolized all over the fucking world in the independence, Lucha Underground, CMML. He could go to Ring of Honor. He could go to New Japan and fucking succeed at the highest fucking levels and be happy while doing it. He doesn't need the WWE. The WWE doesn't need him. Sometimes the WWE goes out and gets these guys for the simple fact that they don't want them going anywhere else because they have this obsession with bringing in guys for the simple fact of maybe making them unhappy, even though they have no plans to push them, you know, ruining some people's careers because they can, you know, keeping talent from other organizations for the simple fact that they don't want them going to these other organizations and they want to keep them under their contract, under lock and key, and they don't want them doing anything until they get old and their stock drops and then nobody gives a fuck about them. I could see that happening, you know? Del Rio doesn't need WWE. The guy could go anywhere, make just as much money, if not more, based on his talent, his in-ring skill, merchandising. I know he's going to be a highly sought-after name as soon as he is completely wiped done with WWE. There's no problem, and this is no issue for Del Rio. The fact that Del Rio was promised something and it wasn't delivered after signing a fucking lucrative deal with WWE... That's where, if I was Del Rio, I would have a problem. That's fucked up. If you're going to promise him main event pushes, world titles, especially for the fucking money you're offering him and the money that he signed for, why aren't you going to live up to your end of the bargain? I don't get it. And then promising to put him with fucking Paul Heyman, anybody in the wrestling world at this stage of the game would fucking kill to have Paul Heyman as their advocate anybody and don't tell me no anybody would fucking die to have paul Heyman stand next to you and promote you as his client that's it del rio said you know what i was promised all this and that's where his attitude turned if you're promising something to somebody obviously they're going to develop a fucking attitude you know it's like you at work you, you promised a fucking promotion and you know you're getting a promotion, and you know you worked your ass off for this promotion, and you know people fucking need you. Your job needs you. Your fucking peers, your, your co-workers need you. They respect you. And then all of a sudden, your manager says, fuck you, I'm giving the promotion to somebody else who has less experience than you, who's making less money than you, because she's younger, or they're younger. He's younger. It's fucked up. Of course I would say something. Of course you would say something. Of course Del Rio... His attitude changed because he was promised something and he was never given what he was promised. It's regular, ordinary, basic human emotions. You don't promise something to somebody and then take it away. Simple. Simple as that. So, Del Rio, I actually agree with him. It's, the, it's Triple H who didn't agree with him. Triple H thought he was a bad, a bad influence. Triple H thought he had a bad attitude. You know? He's just doing what any professional wrestler would do. You promise him something, he doesn't get it, he signed the contract for it, and then it never happens. League of Nations, jobbing to Roman Reigns, no identity, no character, United States Championship run after beating John Cena, fighting Kalisto, and Kalisto, and Kalisto, and then drops off the face of the earth. Nothing. Nothing. Of course, if I was Del Rio, I would be upset. But listen, take this as a lesson learned, WWE does not want you, they don't need you, you don't need them, you don't want them. Make your money for the rest of your career doing what you did before you came back to the WWE for round two. As for Paige, listen, it's fucked up that WWE is going to fuck with somebody's relationship, but honestly, I agree with WWE in this sense. Del Rio is what, 36, 37 years old? Paige is what, 22, 23? Obviously, Del Rio is a lot older then Paige, you know, Paige is just in that, that stage of life where, you know, she likes older men, whatever, whatever the case may be, I don't fucking know, but I know as far as WWE sees it, they see a lot more potential, a lot more talent, and a lot more fucking use and a future for Paige than they do Del Rio, they don't want to fire Paige, 
they find Paige to be much more beneficial to them than Del Rio is at this stage in life and this stage of his career. So obviously they're going to keep Paige and get rid of Del Rio. But to threaten to fire her, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. I don't think, I, I don't think anybody can do that. But, but, but being that she doesn't have a fucking citizenship here, I didn't know that. Del Rio doesn't have a citizenship here. I didn't know that. You know, would WWE go to those lengths to fucking really stick it to them and fuck both of them over? I don't know. I don't know, man. I honestly don't know. But the reason why Paige is sticking around and the reason why Paige abided to WWE's ruling and demands, because I know she values her job. I know WWE values her. She has a bright future. She's young. She's got a whole fucking career ahead of her. They don't need Del Rio. Paige is more valuable to them than Del Rio was. So, just leave it at that. But threatening to, to fire somebody unless you break off a relationship, you know, it's fucked up. I never heard of any, I never heard of anything like that. I honestly never heard of anything like that. But it is what it is, man. That's, that's pretty much everything. That's covering everything you guys need to know about Del Rio and Paige and what went on behind the scenes, the scenes what Del Rio was promised, what they said to Paige. Firing Paige, possibly, if she didn't break up with Del Rio. Unbelievable shit, man. Unbelievable fucking shit. Rumor. Wheels are in motion for Goldberg's WWE return. Ever since Bill Goldberg was officially announced in the promotion for WWE 2K17, there's been a lot of speculation about his potential return to the WWE. The WWE Universe is still holding out for a return from Goldberg. That was proven as the main event of SummerSlam ended with Goldberg chants filling the Barclays Center. There have been a lot of rumors about Goldberg returning to the WWE for one more match, going back as far as WrestleMania 32 several months ago. However, a new report is claiming that it, mightily, it might finally become a reality. According to a report from TMZ Sports, the former WCW and WWE champion and WWE are talking about potentially expanding their working relationship beyond the work that is being done for WWE 2K17. Apparently, Goldberg has been in touch with WWE officials, but the details of these conversations aren't clear as of this writing. All that has been said is the wheels are in motion. The potential for a match is likely, but something like a WWE Legends contract, appearances on WWE TV, or a WWE Hall of Fame induction seems much more likely, and that's pretty much where everything is going to be sitting right now, and in those things. It's more likely than coming back and returning to the ring for a match. Uh, after over a decade away. So the wheels are in motion for Goldberg to come back. TMZ reported this earlier in the week. Nothing is set in stone yet. Nothing more than just speculation and talk. If every if everybody wanted to be a betting man, I'd say, in my honest opinion, it would be wise to bet on a Goldberg return. Goldberg will be back. I don't see him back this year. I do see him back closer to WrestleMania season. That's just my opinion on that, but... Being that everybody that has worked with WWE 2K17 in the marketing scheme for that game, they always come back around and do something with the WWE. So it happened with Warrior, it happened with Sting, and it's going to happen with Goldberg. It's just a matter of what time is right, what, you know, when the time is right, when, and usually that time is around WrestleMania season. So the wheels are in motion for Goldberg to come back to the WWE. Ryback reveals what WWE offered him during his contract dispute with the company. I don't know what's going on here, but apparently Ryback must be on some kind of drugs. I don't know if this is legit. I don't know if he's fucking trolling people. I don't know, man. This is what Ryback had to say. Back in May, Ryback entered into a very public contract dispute with WWE, which led the company to send him home for the last three months of his current deal. It wasn't until three weeks ago that Ryback's contract with WWE officially expired. His contract dispute with the company obviously couldn't be solved, but the details were never really revealed until earlier this week. Ryback has now entered the independent circuit of the industry under the simple moniker of The Big Guy. He has made several other changes, including starting his own podcast called Conversation with The Big Guy. During the first episode of his podcast, he went in-depth about his WWE career and the contract dispute that led to his departure from the company. You can listen to the full podcast online. He also revealed that his departure from WWE 
was not about a money issue. Just so everybody knows, I walked away from the WWE, he says. The contract offer that I walked away from was a three-year, $1.5 million contract. Apparently, he was unhappy with the taxes and the travel expenses. As you guys know, WWE does not pay for travel expenses for their main roster talent. You have to worry about that on your own, and it comes out of your pocket. We, meanwhile, the NXT people, the NXT wrestlers and the men and women down there, everything is paid for when they go on the road. Buses, flight, hotel, everything is paid for for NXT. So you, you figured it would be the other way around. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But uh, I'm assuming they figured, you know what, those guys in developmental aren't making much money, so they are going to provide that extra leisure for them. Meanwhile, the guys on the main roster are making so much more money, you know, contract-wise, uh, you know, downside guarantee and, and merchandise and all this shit. So they figured on the main roster that most of these guys can handle that type of thing. But it really is tough, man. In, in any other sport, you look at MLB, you look at NBA, you look at the NHL, NFL, everything is paid for. Hotel and travel, everything is paid for by the team. The teams are paying for their players to go here and go there and make sure they're in a fucking good hotel, a good hotel room and Everything else, make sure they get to the next city on time and on, you know, in a, in, a, in a comfortable way. This is unlike anything I've ever, I've, I've ever seen. WWE not paying for anything for their main roster guys. But Ryback should have known that going into this, man. He, he knew this already. You know, he thought he was bigger than he really was. You're not a John Cena. You're not a Seth Rollins. You're not a Roman Reigns. You're not going to be flying on Vince McMahon's private jets going to these fucking shows. Who the fuck do you think you are? You've done nothing. Yeah, you, may, you may have bust your ass to get to where you are, but you're, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you're really nothing. The company doesn't need you. The company doesn't need you. Everybody, like a Ryback, is expendable to the company. That's what he didn't understand. In his mind, he was a John Cena, Seth Rollins, Roman Reign-esque type talent. No. You're fucking Ryback. Your merchandise sales weren't through the roof. Nobody even gave a fuck about you when you came through the curtain. Who are you? Nobody. Apparently, we, he was unhappy with the taxes and the travel expenses. So he felt undervalued and said that he and Triple H had many heated discussions about it. Ultimately, he said he was grateful to WWE for the chance. Now, um, I believe he went on to say as well that WWE had booked him to beat AJ Styles at WrestleMania 32 or some shit like that. I don't know what the fuck it was about. I really didn't read too much in depth. Because quite frankly, I don't give a shit about Ryback. I just find it funny, like, how he said it really wasn't a money issue. Of course it was a fucking money issue. You want WWE to pay for your hotel and your travel. It's a money issue. It is a money issue. Simple. He can deny it up, down, left, right. It's not a money issue. He walked away from a three-year, $1.5 million contract. Some guys in WWE don't even make that. But he says it wasn't a money issue. Of course it was a money issue. It came down to keeping money in your pocket. It came down to WWE not willing to budge and pay for this guy's hotel and expenses and his travel. It's a money issue. Vince McMahon was not willing to do that for a Ryback. Simple. And Jim Ross always states when a WWE superstar or a wrestler in general leaves a company, it's one of two things, if not both. Cash and creative, the two C's. He's not lying. He is not lying. In this instance, it was cash. That's it. No matter how much he wants to dispute it, it was cash. That drove Ryback away. Finally, guys, John Cena won't be taking his hiatus until October. Will he be at Backlash? Will he be on WWE television? I don't know. Let's find out. After losing his match at SummerSlam to AJ Styles, John Cena took off his armband and left it in the ring as he left the Barclays Center. Some type of symbolic meaning didn't mean anything. Cena will be back. And I will talk about this next week on Off the Script when I talk about the backlash, preview, and predictions. Cena didn't show up on WWE programming at all last week. Naturally, that led to a lot of speculation about his future in the WWE, especially considering it has been reported that he will be taking a hiatus 
to film the second season of American Grit on the Fox Network this fall. According to a report from WrestlingInc.com, John Cena isn't going anywhere yet. Apparently, the filming for American Grit doesn't start until mid-October, so Cena will remain on WWE programming until then. The most recent rumor on Cena's next feud claimed he'd be continuing his feud with AJ Styles, but the latter is due to face Dean Ambrose at Backlash for the WWE Championship. Since Backlash is less than two weeks away, Cena versus Styles may continue after Ambrose versus Styles, but the greater question is if the Phenomenal One will be the WWE Champion in a few weeks. It would be interesting booking for WWE to give this, you know, to give AJ Styles a huge win over John Cena just to put over Ambrose as WWE Champion. This week's SmackDown should make Cena and the situation with John Cena more clear. I don't think WWE is in any position to have AJ Styles come out of SummerSlam and have him lose to Dean Ambrose. Not going to happen. John Cena, no matter if you hate him or love him, is still the face of the WWE. He is still the number one guy in that company. AJ Styles got a win over the number one guy in the company at your second biggest pay-per-view of the year, right? And he beat him clean. The fact that AJ Styles now is challenging for the WWE Championship, to me, that means AJ Styles is deserving and should be handed the WWE Championship. That's it. Dean Ambrose can chase. Dean Ambrose can fail. Okay? You can even weave a storyline into there from Monday Night Raw and have Triple H pretty much... Listen, the, Triple H went after Rollins and they went after Reigns. Who's to say Triple H can't go after Dean Ambrose and just infiltrate SmackDown? He can do it. Weave that into the Monday Night Raw storyline. Have Triple H fuck over Dean Ambrose for the WWE Championship. He already fucked Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns out of the Universal Championship. Why not have... Dean Ambrose get fucked by Triple H as well, or someone doing the bidding of Triple H. And you can weave the interpromotional storyline into that and have the Shield reform. Dean Ambrose now wants to get his revenge just like Rollins and Reigns do, and Triple H can assemble his boys, NXT, whether it, it's a full-blown invasion, I don't know, but it could certainly work. WWE has the pieces to be creative about all of this. But I do expect AJ Styles to be the WWE Champion. Now, I don't want to get too much into this because I want to talk about this next week when we talk about Backlash. But obviously, if John Cena is going to be out, you know, John Cena is going to take a hiatus in October, right? And John Cena is going to probably come back in 2017 fully refreshed, ready to go. Who do you think his first feud is going to be? Obviously, it's going to be AJ Styles. Obviously, AJ Styles is still going to be the WWE Champion. John Cena is coming dangerously close to Ric Flair's record. What do you think is going to happen? AJ Styles got his clean win over John Cena. What happens next when John Cena comes back and reignites his feud with AJ Styles? Not only is AJ Styles going to be the WWE Champion, but John Cena is going to, John Cena is going to get his win back. I'll just leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. There's no way WWE is going to allow AJ Styles to beat John Cena clean twice. If they go and the feud is reignited, reignited, and AJ Styles is indeed the WWE Champion, need I say more? That's it. That's all I'm going to say on that. I don't want to jinx it, but I could certainly see WWE going in that direction. That's it, guys. Thank you so much. Off the Script Part 2 is in the books. Tomorrow, what I got, original plans for Sasha Banks and the WWE Women's Championship and her title reign revealed. SmackDown has killed... Daniel Bryan and The Miz angle from Talking Smack. It is no more. Dead. Why? We'll talk about it tomorrow. Plus, Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton. The rematch is set for next month in Chicago at a fucking house show. Why? And what is WWE's reasoning for this? We'll talk about that. Plus, hopefully some more WWE news, man. There really is nothing this weekend. It is fucking bare. So you got to bear with me, man. But that's all I got for part two. If you enjoyed the video... Hit that thumbs up. Thank you guys so much. Check out the description for everything you guys need. Patreon. You got Twitter, YouTube. Subscribe and follow me on Twitter and YouTube. Wrestle Crate. WWE Slam Crate by Loot Crate. Check out the videos. Barbershopwindow.com for your Eva Marie t-shirts and everything else on my online shop, man. Barbershopwindow.com. And finally, I'll be back with Off the Script tomorrow, part three, episode 133. Until then, guys, thank you so much. Hit that thumbs up, and I'll be back on Sunday morning with part three of this podcast. Until then, I'm JD, and I'll talk to you guys later.